Yo, what is going on guys? Can you guys hear me okay? Just give me some ones. Let me know if you can hear me okay. I see a bunch of people saying that they subscribe. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's going on guys? Sounds like you guys can hear me good. Just gonna double check on my end. And we'll get started. Is there any delay on my webcam? So I just um, tweaked my OBS settings to see if there was any lag and hopefully I got it fixed because there was lag last time I did a live stream so I haven't done one for a while but I fixed the settings and I think I'm good now. Awesome, that's great, fantastic. So it's been a while since I've done a live stream so today I figured we would do a live stream and I was looking through the questions on my channel under this community tab here and I saw some questions quite a bit coming in people asking is there really a way to make money that's legit starting from zero so I thought that that would be an interesting topic for us to cover today so I'm gonna try and roll an intro and see if we can get the intro to go while it's live and I'm gonna answer this question and then I'm also gonna take some of your questions live here so it should be pretty exciting but let's try and roll that intro Hopefully that worked. We'll see on the replay, but I think it did. Okay, so we're going to get into that. I'm going to go through the chat box and answer some questions as well. But um, if you guys have never been on a live stream with me, welcome. Glad to have you. And I'll try to do more of these more often if you guys like this thing. Um, but it's kind of uh, something I haven't done for a while. I don't think I've done any in 2018 yet, actually. But I think now that we've got things going, we may as well do some more. Uh, someone says, is drop shipping still worth it? I don't do a whole lot of drop shipping. So, I mean, I couldn't say, but I know that there are a lot of people out there killing it. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I would think that it's probably still worth it. I think the business model doesn't really die, but I think a lot of times people can saturate things. So maybe you don't want to do what everyone else is doing, but try to do it a little bit differently. I think that would definitely be a good idea. Uh, when will I, I be opening up Maps Mentor again, someone says. I open it up periodically. If you're on my email list, then I will notify you when I open it up again. Just make sure you're on my email list. Uh, what work do I do right now? Mostly I've been focused on YouTube quite a bit. And um, I do have some clients I'm working with. Actually, I'm releasing a video tomorrow about how I made $600 or how I'm making $600 with a client that I'm working with. So that'll be pretty good. Uh, will there be a replay? Yes, there'll be a replay. But I actually just posted a video. I don't know if I posted it yesterday or a couple days ago talking about how I've been taking focus away from my other businesses like my software business and my consulting business because I really want to focus more on growing the YouTube channel. So takes quite a bit of time to come up with video ideas and edit videos and all that. I edit all my videos myself, so it takes up a lot of time, but it's something I'm passionate about, so that's kind of what I'm pursuing right now. Um, is getting leads for real estate owners a viable business? Yeah, absolutely. One of the reasons why I like the real estate niche so much is that realtors are one of the few businesses where they actually answer their own phone. Um, a lot of times you can get in direct contact with them. They give you their own phone number, their cell phone. They give you their email address. So rather than having to go and get in touch and have to talk to a gatekeeper, you know, when, when you're in the real estate thing, you can just talk right to a real estate agent. So that's kind of why I like that industry. And I know a lot of other marketers out there who are running, you know, consulting businesses. That's why they like it too. Good question. And by the way, guys, I'm doing this live stream because you guys know I'm, I'm reading through all of your comments and stuff all the time. So it's just kind of another way for me to answer those comments because it's, it's kind of nearly impossible to always respond to every single comment that comes in. So I'm going to try and do more of these live streams. Maybe we'll do them like once a week or something like that. And that way I can kind of go through and answer your questions, stuff that maybe I didn't shoot a video on or that I wasn't able to respond in the comment section. Uh, someone says, what about self-branding yourself and making an online business through your passion? 
I would say that's cool as long as you're as long as you're promoting something that you actually have done and that you have experience in. But if you're like if you're like branding yourself around something that you've never actually done, then then that's I guess when it becomes a problem. But if you're branding yourself around stuff that you've done and you're sharing your experiences, then I think that's that's great. That's awesome. Um, can I teach more ways and strategies of making money with affiliate marketing? Yeah, I can definitely do that. I will try to um, do more of those. Someone said, I used your method with Facebook places and offering them my services to verify their page. Made over 950 in the last week, and I want to thank you. You are the man. Thanks. That's awesome. Congratulations on taking action. You know, that that's the thing. You know, a lot of people... A lot of people try different things, but at the end of the day, it's really going to be about what you actually do, what you actually take action on. So, you know, try to latch on to one of the ideas that I talk about and just go out there and do it because that's really at the end of the day going to make the difference. Like I can show you a bunch of different things that I've learned and things that I know are working for other people and that I've used in the past. But if you don't actually go and take action on it, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. So I, I'm always happy to hear when people actually are going out there and taking action. So thanks for sharing that. That's cool. Good work. Go out there and rinse and repeat or try to get them on, you know, another thing that you can make money with them. Maybe you design a website for them. Uh, which website is the best one for affiliate marketing? Um, it kind of depends on what kind of affiliate marketing you're doing. If you're doing CPA marketing, I like to use this website called OfferVault to look up offers. So you could actually kind of go through here and you can see like who's got the best offers. Like, let's say you wanted to find a gaming offer. You could type in gaming and then it'll tell you who's kind of got the best offers for gaming. If you're talking more like affiliate offers for like courses or digital stuff, I mean, ClickBank is obviously a good choice. Um, JVZoo and Warrior Plus are okay too, but otherwise, if you're doing CPA marketing, you just go in here. Otherwise, too, the other option is if you want to look for like affiliate programs that are more like underground, you just go into Google and type in like whatever the niche is that you're entering and then type in affiliate program and uh, you can find them that way too. Do you do cold calls and then arrange some kind of meetings or do you just do cold calls? Well, I got into internet marketing because I didn't want to, you know, deal with clients. I wanted to stay behind my computer. I'm kind of an introverted person. So the more I can stay behind my computer, the better. That's just my personality. So I like to do, if I'm going to do calls or when I did calls or when I have other people do calls for me, I like to do the calls and try to just like either close the deal or at least get some kind of like meeting to like talk about things like on Skype or, um, you know, run over something that way. So I don't really like to do in-person meetings, but I will tell you that you can probably get in-person meetings a lot easier if you're willing to do them. It's just not something that I like to do. So if you're willing to do it, cold calling and, and saying, you know, hey, um, do you have time this Wednesday at 9 a.m. to meet and talk about how I can get you more, you know, customers off of Facebook or something like that? Yes or no. If you're asking a question that really only has a yes or no and it's about a meeting, then you're going to have a lot better chance at getting it. So it can be a lot easier. Um, but then you're required to go in and meet with someone. So it's just kind of there's there's pros and cons to both. The other cool thing is is if someone rebuttals you and they say, they're not really going to say no. Really what ends up happening when you take that approach is they'll say, well, 9 a.m. doesn't work for me. And then you can say, okay, well, how about Thursday at 4 p.m. or try a different time. Makes it a lot easier to handle objections, I think. Um, am I purposefully ignoring you? No, I'm not purposefully ignoring you. We've got almost 100 people on here asking questions. So if I don't see your question, I'm sorry. Um, let me go back and see if I can find it. I want to make money and I am 11 years old. Um, so if you're younger and you're trying to make money, I mean, obviously you're going to probably need the assistance of your parents a little bit. Um, when I started off and I was like doing miscellaneous business things younger before I was 18, I actually had my mom, you know, let me use her information to like set up different payment accounts. Like if I needed a PayPal account. So you're definitely going to, you know, probably need a parent to help you set at least something like that up. 
Otherwise, I mean, you're left with like the typical like jobs that you hear about to try and make money. Maybe it's going around and trying to cut the neighbor's grass or um, shoveling snow. You know, if you go walk up and down the street when it snows and you start knocking on the doors and say, hey, I'll shovel your driveway for 20 bucks, you're probably going to get some people to take you up on that. So that would be kind of your other your other route to go if your parents aren't willing to back you. Um, do I do mentoring? I don't do any mentoring right now, not one-on-one. -on -one. I just don't have the time for it right now. I wish I did, um, but I just don't. So, uh, so I, I'm trying to do a lot of YouTube videos, and uh, I try to do webinars pretty often, So, and these live streams. So if you can catch those or read my book, that's, that's probably the best way to get mentoring from me indirectly, but still get mentoring. Um, are there other alternative sites for free pictures other than Pixabay? Actually, I really like this one. Let me show you. I'll pull it up. I use this site a lot. It's kind of one of my little secret sites. It's unsplash.com. And I use this for backgrounds a lot, actually. But you can come in here and, I mean, they have awesome pictures, like beautiful pictures of, like, different scenery and stuff like that. So I use this a lot for backgrounds on my sites. And... um I don't know, just, you know, a lot of really cool, like, scenery and stuff like that. Like, that would look really cool as a background on something. So, it's a pretty cool site. You can also use, like, Flickr and make sure you sort by commercial rights. That's the key. There's a way to sort on a lot of these sites by commercial rights. And if you do that, you're pretty much golden. But, again, just make sure it's not copyrighted because you'll get in trouble for that. Okay, here's a good question from Manny. What's the best service to offer a small startup business who likely doesn't have a lot of extra money but does need help in an area to grow a business, like a hairdresser, barber, or mechanic? So I would say the best way to help them is something that's going to get them results, get them more clients. Um, when I think of like hairdressers or barbers, I kind of immediately think of a site like Groupon. You know, what if you could get them an offer set up on Groupon to uh, get people in the door? And a lot of people take advantage of those. Like a lot of customers will see a Groupon discount pop up and they'll go in there. Now, here's the thing about like a hairdresser. Whoops. <laughs> Most took out my headphones on that one. Okay. Here's the thing about the hairdresser or the barber. Their customers are repeat customers. Thank you for the subscription, Jason. Appreciate that. Anyone else who's not subscribed definitely hit that subscription. Your name will pop up on the screen too. Um, but yeah, here's the thing about hairdressers and barbers. Their customers are repeat customers, right? Which means that when they can get someone in the door just one time, even though it's a low ticket amount, even though maybe it's only $20, $30, they're going to get that customer coming in at least once every two months. And sometimes for some people, even more than that, you know, some people get their hair cut even more. Um, so I would say that's probably what I would lean towards doing. I'll try and get them set up on like a Groupon or something like that. And it's not going to cost them a lot to get set up on and it's something you can get them results right away. Um, so I'm going to do some more questions, but I did want to talk about what the topic of this video was about before I forget. Um, and hopefully my, I see my stream help it says it's in the yellow. Hopefully you can still see it. Okay. And uh, thanks, Rhett, for the subscription. Appreciate that. Um, so the topic of the video is, can you get started making money without any upfront investment? Hey, thanks, Chris, for the subscription. And the answer is, yes, you can. So, and there's, there's obviously some, you know, exceptions to that. But when you're starting off, you have really two things. I mean, always you have two things to your advantage. You have either time or you have money. And you leverage one of these two things to basically make more money. So we'll just put like a huge dollar sign. Now, when you're already established, you're gonna have probably less time, right? You're probably not gonna have much time. So time's probably not gonna be a good option for you to make more money. But when you're just starting off, time is usually your best um, asset that you have. You probably have more time then you do money. So you can leverage that time to make you more money. It's the other way around though once you start once you start getting successful. You don't have much time, 
but you do have money and you can use money to grow more. You know, you can um, hire help to help you out or you can outsource stuff or you can buy software and tools to help automate. But almost everything that can be automated can be done manually. It just takes more time. So I think that that's the answer to the question is think of something that you can do that's going to leverage your time because starting off, you probably have more time and you can use that time to fill in the gaps of someone else. Like, is there something that you can do? Can you learn a skill? You know, maybe it's that you're, you get really good with WordPress and you build awesome websites and you can go and you can outsource that skill. Everyone is out there looking for someone who can design an awesome website. And that's like something I try to do a lot on my channel, right? Is I try to teach you guys different skills that you can use so that if you are starting off, you know, you can take your time, you can learn these skills, and then you can go and outsource that or be an outsourcer to someone else who needs that and make money that way. Um, would you suggest Skillshare or Udemy as a good way to start? I mean, it depends if you're, it depends if you're trying to teach something or if you're trying to start a service-based business. If you're trying to start a service-based business, I would recommend literally going out there and going to the place where people are that need these services. Maybe it's Upwork, right? Everyone goes on Upwork to try and hire people. So you could go on Upwork and find people who are already looking for people who have the time and have the skills and then they want to pay you the money, right? So if you can just go there, the other option is sometimes you can go to Craigslist and you can look there for people who are looking for website design or looking for SEO services or digital marketing services or Facebook advertisements. And again, they're going to leverage your time and they're going to pay for that. So that in a nutshell is the answer of how you make money starting from zero. You leverage your time. You don't need any money then. You just use your time. I'm just looking at more questions, guys. There's a lot coming in. Can you make money offering SEO services on Facebook groups? Yeah. I think the best strategy with that approach, and it's a really good approach too, is you want to go and find groups that are related to like a local area. So like maybe it's called Florida small business owners. If you find a Facebook group called that, well, guess what? It's probably going to be full of a lot of business owners. And the key is to go in those groups and start looking at posts that people are commenting on and go in those posts and start commenting back, answering questions. The goal is you want to try to become a thought leader of these groups. You want to try to be some someone that is memorable that people are going to remember. And then after you start adding your comments to these groups, to these different posts, you want to start making posts of your own. And when you make posts of your own, you want them to be telling stories or tutorials. So take something that you know, something like, um, I don't know, just think of like, oh, hey, have you checked out your Yelp listing to see if you've claimed it? There's a lot of business owners out there who haven't claimed their Yelp listing. And maybe you post a quick tutorial on how they can go on Yelp, search for their business name, and then check to make sure that their listing is claimed. You know, posting something helpful like that is going to be really awesome. And it's going to get people looking and like paying attention to you. And then you'll start to notice that people will start commenting on your post and they'll say something like, oh, wow, thanks. My, my Yelp listing wasn't actually claimed. And then you can start going out and you can start private messaging the people who comment because now you've got a captive audience. These are people who are interested in what you do, what you offer. And you can reach out to them and see how else you might be able to help them. You could reach out and say, hey, I'm glad you were able to claim your Yelp listing. Um, would you mind if I checked out your Google My Business listing? Because a lot of times people who don't have their Yelp listing claimed also haven't claimed their Google My Business listing. And I'd be happy to check it out. What's your business name? And boom, now you've got a fresh lead. You've got a connection. You've built up the trust with this person. So absolutely, um, Facebook groups are a great way to grab clients of any kind, but especially SEO clients. I'm looking on my other monitor at questions. Someone else asked again, is drop shipping still a good business in 2018? Again, I, I don't do a lot of drop shipping right now. Um, I've got some case studies of some of the drop shipping stuff I did, but 
it was from a while ago. And um, I don't do a lot right now of drop shipping. But what I will say is that don't uh, try not to copy everyone. Try to do something different because I know that there are people out there doing really well with drop shipping. But I also know that it's a market that gets very saturated and has a lot of competition and people steal each other's ideas. They steal you know, what products are working. They can actually see like, okay, this product is working because with Shopify, you can go in, you can find anyone's store and you can see what their best selling products are. Like it's not a secret. And then people will go and reverse engineer ads too. So try to do something unique and something different if you are going to do Shopify. But, um, I, I think everything works with Shopify and stuff like that. It's just a matter of doing it different. But again, I, I don't do a lot of drop shipping, but that's just my, um, that's kind of my insight in on it. So take it for what it's worth. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Hi, Paul, I love making jewelry. Which platform do you recommend for selling jewelry, preferably print on demand? So I would actually recommend, number one would be Etsy. Etsy's a great site. Um, and I also heard Amazon Handmade as well. I'll see if I can pull it up. It's loading on my other screen. All right, so Amazon Handmade as well is another one. Um, but also, this is a really cool site as well, is Gearbubble and Gearbubble, you can see here, uh, someone made a pendant and a mug, and this is like print on demand, like what you were asking about. Um, so I would recommend that. And I know that you can use these two in conjunction as well. You can create your print on demand uh, jewelry, like the necklace, and then you can bring it over to Shopify. You can bring it over to eBay. You can bring it over to Amazon and you can sell it. And then once it sells, you take the money that the person paid you, you come onto Gearbubble, and you place your order and then they print it and ship it. Hey, thanks Sean for the subscription, appreciate it. Um, and, and by the way, I think it's awesome how many people are subscribing during this because I would have thought that mostly only my existing audience would see it. So if you're stumbling across this somewhere, thank you for the subscription in the, in the search engine. I'm sure you're seeing it in YouTube. Uh, what is the best method to do retail arbitrage without much money up front? Um, the best way is you're going to need some startup money to do retail arbitrage because you're, number one, you're buying products. And I just realized I didn't have my monitor on, so you guys couldn't see Gearbubble. There's Gearbubble, by the way, and then there's Etsy. The chat box is going crazy too. I'm sure you guys probably told me, but I couldn't see it. So for those of you who are saying that, I'm not acknowledging your question. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying. There's a lot coming in at all at once. Um, but yeah. Let's see. Um, Pascal says, I really want to do your method where I offer free websites and then charge for hosting every month, but I can't contact every single client every month. So they pay me as their way to automate it. You can actually automate that with PayPal. Um, you could set up a subscription within PayPal and you can automate it that way. Uh, fresh books is also another service that will send automated invoices and then you can use them to, uh, you can process payments to do them as well. Like they have a online payment platform and it can also hook into your PayPal account and this will do this automatically. It'll automatically send the invoice. So, um, that's what I would do. Oh yeah. Retail arbitrage. Sorry. I went off track on that question. It's a little bit hard to watch a chat box and answer questions at the same time. So starting with retail arbitrage, you probably are going to need some money up front for that one because you have to buy the inventory and then you're putting on Amazon to sell it. 
The good part is, is unlike private labeling with Amazon, you already know your item is going to sell. There's no really risk involved. At least if you're following like my methods where you're checking the best sales rank. Um, and you're going to put, send your item in, it's going to sell relatively fast within a couple weeks. So that's the good part about it. So if you, even if you need to use like a credit card and you start buying some items that way, you know, you're probably going to get that money back fairly quickly. And if you don't, you get the item sent back and you return it to the store if you don't sell it. So that's kind of the nice part about it. Um, but you are going to, someone says hit the thumbs up, please. Yes. Hit the thumbs up, please, please, please. But you are going to need some money. And um, you could definitely can start out with, even if you start out with like, I don't know, 30 bucks and then reinvest some money and build up and build up and build up as you make profit, then that's fine too. Um, the screen is frozen. Sorry about that if the screen is frozen. Hopefully it unfreezes. Let me know if it does. I'm guessing it's my internet. My internet is pretty crappy. Uh, what is the name of my Facebook Places video? Can't find it. I have no idea. To, to whoever made money on the Facebook Places video that commented earlier, if you know what video that was, um, let me know or feel free to link it in the chat because I don't know. Honestly, guys, I make so many videos now that I couldn't even point you back to the video if I wanted to. Like, So... I guess we're getting a lot of uh, freezing on the stream here, so I'm probably going to shut it down here in a couple of minutes because I don't want a stream full of a bunch of freezing. So um, I'm going to look through and see if there's any other questions that I didn't think. I mean, there's a lot of questions that came through, but any of that are immediate that I should answer. We need more playlists. Okay, I'll try to make some more playlists for sure. But yeah, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap here. It looks like a lot of you guys are saying that the stream is freezing. Hopefully it won't do that on the replay. My internet's kind of crappy. Oh, it's not freezing. Okay, good. Well, hopefully it's working. Someone said, I saw your SEO broadcast. I was wondering how much time I would need because for the next two years, I'll be uh, in the Navy. Um, that's, it's kind of a hard question to answer because it's going to be dependent on you and your experience level. Um, I like to say that if you can dedicate like a few hours every week, you know, maybe if it's an hour after you're done with whatever you're doing for the day with work, you sit down and try to learn stuff and try to take action, you probably will do fine. Oh, you just had to refresh. Okay, good. When you set up Yelp accounts, do you use your email or the owner's email? I either use the owner's email or I create a new email for the owner just for the purpose of setting up their local directory sites. I really want to make $10 a day for Fortnite. Any quick and easy tip. Fortnite's awesome, by the way. I don't know if you guys seen my computer back there. I've been playing it nonstop. There it is. You probably saw the video, but it's a beast. Yeah, I've been, I've been addicted to Fortnite. Um, Fortnite's free. Why do you need the money? trying to get the V-Bucks to upgrade the gear. <laughs> um, I would do some arbitrage, you know? Go and find uh, business owners who need some logos designed and then go find a graphic designer who's willing to let you resell their work, who's willing to let you partner with them on Fiverr and just ask them, hey, if I find you more people who need logos, can I, can I pay you and then charge them a little bit more money for it? <laughs> V-Bucks, boy, yeah. Got to get them V-Bucks. I'm thinking about starting a Twitch channel. Well, I already have a Twitch channel, but I'm thinking about streaming Fortnite on it. How many people here would be interested in Fortnite streams on Twitch? I might do that. What is the quickest way to make affiliate marketing income? Find a product that you're passionate about or that you think you can get behind and create some helpful tutorials on it. Either blog them or YouTube them. Make sure they're really helpful and then go out there and post them online. And then at the end of your tutorial, drop your affiliate link. It's really that simple. How do I get clients to reply? By following up. That's my number one 
thing for a client getting that most people do wrong. They don't follow up. It takes at least five follow-up attempts usually to get a client to reply. So if you're not doing that, then you're probably not going to get a reply. <laughs> I recently cut Fortnite out of my life. It's for the better. It's not as bad as World of Warcraft was, so I'm okay. I'm okay with it. How do you create a business email for the owner? You can do that inside of the control panel, actually. Uh, thanks, Lockdown a Block, for the subscription. Hopefully I pronounced, pronounced that right. But yeah, you can do that in your control panel of your web host. I have a tutorial. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here. I think it's pauljames.com forward slash hosting. Let me see. Make sure I give you the right link. Hosting for clients. pauljames.com forward slash hosting for clients. I'll put it on the screen and show you what it looks like. But it basically, this is what it looks like. And it shows you, number one, how to set up the hosting. Number two, video two, is how to set up email accounts for them. And then video three is how to do web design. Now, these are free tutorials. And um, I do uh, have an affiliate link in there for the hosting company that I use. So... I, I can't even pronounce who just subscribed, but thank you for the subscription. Appreciate it. But yeah, so I put up these videos for free to train you guys. Here, perfect example of Affiliate Marketing 101, right? I put together a really helpful training tutorial that's going to help bring a lot of value. And then I just have an affiliate link on here for the hosting. So um, that's a perfect example of how to affiliate market in a way that adds value. Yo, thanks for the donation, Brooklyn. Appreciate that. Can you still rank in the three pack using a PO box? You can never rank in the three pack using a PO box, really. Um, you shouldn't. The gray hat ways, I suppose you could go and you could rent an office, like a virtual office or a mailbox rental, but um, they really don't want you to do that. But P.O. Box, I think, would get you caught for sure. Do I set up the emails for free? No, I usually charge to set up the emails. Um, usually, like, uh, per month. Who's a big YouTuber? Someone says you're my favorite YouTuber. Thanks, I appreciate that. What do I think about Skillshare? Skillshare is fine. Nothing wrong with Skillshare. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this stream. But uh, thanks for spending Friday evening with me. And I hope it is Friday, right? Yeah, it's Friday. <laughs> I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure you show up next time when we do it. I'm trying to pull up someone's channel here. And if you did, make sure you join me next time. But um, yeah, guys, that's all for tonight. We'll see you on the next stream, hopefully soon. See you tomorrow for a video. A video dropping tomorrow. Don't miss it. It's about how I uh, made the $600 in a day using uh, web design. And I'm going to show you how I put together a payment form on a customer's website that we're working on. So yeah, we'll see you there guys. I'm Paul James.